Hello friends, welcome into NFL Daily. I am Tom Down and we have another NFL head coach on his way out. David Culley has been fired by the Houston Texans after just one season. Texans over and looked at the overview of the organization on Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then finally Cannon Culley on Thursday. They allegedly asked him to make offensive staff changes and Culley refused, although... Not really sure that would have mattered in the end for Cully, who allegedly gets $22 million for one year as the Texans head coach. Great, great offer right there. So should the Texans have fired Cully? Get your votes in for me in the comment section. Type in Y for yes and type in N for no. Pretty much everybody, myself included, did not view David Cully as a good hire last year but that was a bad Texans job they didn't interview the best candidates and they ended up passing on everybody but Cully and I don't think there was that much interest in the job given the uncertainty around Deshaun Watson Cully though with what I thought was one of the worst rosters in the NFL also won four games like that I thought that was a very impressive job overall by Cully he exceeded my expectations and I thought exceeded Houston's as well the offense was bad, but like Danny Amendola was their number two receiver. Like, wh what do we really expect to have out of that when you're rotating Davis Mills, a banged up offensive line, and no real ground game to speak of? So, I don't think it's fair that Cully got fired. I thought he probably shouldn't have been hired in the first place. He got enough money to make it worthwhile. And now we're back to square one for Houston, once again searching for a new head coach. So let's break down what I've got 12 different David Cully replacements with a common theme I think you'll see emerge near the end of the videos, getting to the top candidates. First up, Pep Hamilton, the Houston Texans quarterback's coach. There's some early rumblings out there that, especially if Houston hires a defensive mind, we'll get to some of those names later on, that Hamilton could be promoted to being the Houston Texans offensive coordinator. I would be surprised if he became the head coach, although we saw something similar-ish happen a couple years ago. Jim Tom Sula was attached to whoever was going to take the job. They didn't find anyone who wanted to do that, and they ended up just making Jim Tom Sula the head coach. The Niners did in the end. So what do you think? Who should the Texans hire as their head coach? Of course, keep this realistic. You're not getting Bill Belichick, right? So let me know in the comments. This will actually be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it, head down there, and drop a name. Number 11, Dan Quinn, the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator. Seemingly everybody wants to interview Dan Quinn. I wouldn't be surprised if Houston joins the long list of teams that put in an interview request for him. All the teams that have interview requests out at this point have one for Quinn. I think if he takes a job, it's somewhere other than Houston. Leslie Frazier, next up here on this list, the Buffalo Bills, D.C., getting interviews this year, for example, with the Chicago Bears. Wonder if other teams look at him. I'll also make note that Frazier was interviewed last year by the Houston Texans and I believe was one of the finalists for the job that eventually went to Cully. Bill's defense was better this year than what it was last year. I think that only helps to boost Frazier, a former NFL coach himself, boosts his stock. Number nine, Kellen Moore. Uh, he's got a lot of interview requests already out there. I could see Houston putting one in as well. Not sure this is the right job for Kellen Moore, but if they're adamant about getting a better, younger offensive mind, Kellen Moore is fairly high on that list. Today's show is powered by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. It's playoff time, and if you want to make some money betting on the NFL, go do it with our sportsbook partner. It's BetUS, a 125% deposit bonus when you put that 100 bucks and you use, this is important, the URL, bottom of your screen, chatsports.com slash bet, and the promo code NFL Daily. I've been off, but I feel like I'm going to get hot in time for the postseason. Here are my AFC picks. Raiders plus six at the Bengals. Bills minus four against the Patriots. Chiefs minus 13 against the Steelers in the NFC. Bucks minus 9.5 over Philly. Dallas minus three against San Francisco. And the Cardinals 
plus four against the Rams. I love the money line upset there as well. So follow my bets or fade them if you don't trust me. It's chatsports.com slash bet promo code NFL daily. Number eight on my list, that is Jim Caldwell, the former Lions head coach, another guy who interviewed last year, wanted to include him. Not a lot of buzz around him this time. I think Jacksonville could be a good fit for him maybe, but Houston could use some stability as well. Caldwell would be an upgrade, I believe, over David Culley. Let's get into some more unknown candidates, or at least unproven candidates. Nathaniel Hackett, the Green Bay Packers offensive coordinator. Now, non-play calling OCs do scare me. That's why I didn't love hiring David Culley in the first place. You're hiring someone who's an older NFL head coach who hasn't called plays. Well, Hackett has called plays, though he's not that, of course, in Green Bay, and is much younger than David Culley was. He's apparently well regarded by the NFL, so I think a name to watch for several head coaching jobs this year. Speaking of this job, how good is this Texans gig? You've got Nick Casario in there. You, you've got Jack Easterby, a.k.a. Littlefinger, running the show allegedly from behind the scenes and forcing out guys and getting someone who wouldn't fire him. And Nick Casario, it's all weird. Roster's not in great shape. Maybe Davis Mills is your quarterback. How good is the job? One on the low end, ten on the high end. Number six, Byron Leftwich, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator. I think it'd be a great fit in Jacksonville if they fire Trent Baalke. But I think it could be a decent fit in Houston as well. If you're okay with a young guy learning on the job, Leftwich, I think, would be a good move. Eric Bieniemy was heavily linked to the Texans' job as a find a way to keep Deshaun higher, and that ended up not uh, happening. And I wonder this, by the way, although he is getting an interview, for example, with Denver. Bienemy was the hot candidate for several years in a row. Never got hired. I don't know if he didn't interview well, if he just didn't didn't fit those teams. The off-the-field stuff, which is real, was a big issue. I'm not sure. I wonder, though, if his window to be a head coach has already closed. I don't think that'd be fair, but I'm not in those meetings. I don't run those teams. So just asking the question in the end. If you want more NFL videos every single day we got head coach predictions more head coach candidate lists coming up throughout the offseason top free agents and oh so much more hit that big red button and subscribe today for free videos right here on chat sports one of my favorite names brian dable the or D uh, dable the bills offensive coordinator i believe that he should be hired somewhere this cycle i love him for the chargers job and the jags job last year Jags job still works. Miami, Houston, this would be a good hire. The top four, by the way, of this list all have a very similar theme. I think this job is going to go to a Nick Casario slash Jack Easterby connection. Somebody who is or did work for the Patriots organization with one or both of those two guys. Brian Dable fits that mold as well. Even before the Adam Schefter report came out that said Gerard Mayo was going to be a top candidate, he was already number three on my list because of the aforementioned Casario Easter B connection. Mayo is not a fully finished product. This is a little bit more in the lines of trying to find the next Mike Vrabel, I think. Only the Patriots linebackers coach, but he is well regarded by the NFL. This is not the only job he's interviewing for Denver, among others, looking at him as a head coach. Before we get to the top two, this question plays in to those top two guys. Will Deshaun Watson ever play again for the Houston Texans? Type in A for yes. The dream is not dead as there's one coach with rumors around him and Deshaun. Or type in B for no. He will not ever play again for Houston. He will be traded instead. Sound off for me in the comments section. Number two, Josh McDaniels, the Patriots offensive coordinator. Always linked alongside Nick Casario for various jobs, did not interview last year. It kind of seems like, fair or not, that David Culley was simply the stopgap guy. That this was going to be a guy the team hired and then brought in a good guy this year around. McDaniels could be 
that guy. And I wonder if he is one of, if not the top backup target for Houston. I, I don't love the way he handled Indy. Might make him a good fit in the end in Houston with that organization having some issues, if we're being honest here, guys. But at number one, I think it's Brian Flores. Now, I don't know for certain that Houston will be able to get him. I wonder if there's already been some back-channel communication by Houston with one of their top guys, one of those top three saying, hey, would you take the job? If so, boom, then they end up bringing him in. Flores, I believe, is the Houston Texans' top target at this point. Doesn't mean they're going to get him, but I think that would be somebody they would try to acquire if they're able. Now, the rumor out there right now, which has been out there for a little bit, Sean Watson says he wants to play for wanted to play for Brian Flores in Miami. If you hire Flores, could you keep Deshaun Watson then? I'm not sold on that front. I don't know if it's enough. I think the relationship between the player and the organization is probably a little bit too far gone. So I think Flores, McDaniels, and Mayo. I feel pretty good about that top three. It's early in the process. It's been less than like four hours since, uh, depending on when you're watching this, I guess, since um, uh, Cully got fired. But I think one of those top three names are the names to watch in Houston. If that ends up changing, you know we'll keep you guys updated right here on NFL Today. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe for free videos every single day right here at Chat Sports.